Now one of my favourite smartphones from last year is this lovely slab of ceramic right here, the Oppo Find X5 Pro, although you could never accuse it of being solid value for money. This gorgeous but rather expensive rectangle cost an eye-watering £1,200 when it first launched in 2022, which is just a, a wee bit mental and also kind of hard to justify when the likes of the Pixel 7 flagship smartphone is hundreds of pounds cheaper. But thankfully that price has dropped a little bit in 2023, so now you can snuff for yourself your very own Oppo Find X5 Pro for just £900. <sighs> And with the launch of Oppo's Find X6 series lurking just around the corner, that cost may well drop a bit more real soon. But is this blower actually still worth considering in 2023 when we have alternatives such as the Pixel 7 Pro and the Xiaomi 12T Pro? Well, I've been regularly returning to this phone these past few months to see how it's been holding up, and I've had my SIM slapped in there full time this past week. So here's my full in depth Find X5 Pro re review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, when I originally reviewed the Find X5 Pro, I had the black model and it proved to be a proper smudgy bugger, constantly coated in fingery filth even if you spent half your day wiping it on your pants. Thankfully, I did manage to swap this out for the white model not long after, and while this undoubtedly still gets proper smudgy and greasy, that pale finish does a remarkable job of hiding all of that grease and grime. An Oppo's ceramic unibody looks bloody lovely too, from that subtle logo action to the gentle contours of the camera bump. It's a seemingly simple and yet unique and distinctive design, which has drawn more than a few positive reactions from friends and family over the months. And being ceramic, it is a proper hard case as well, not a single scratch anywhere on that arse end or on the metal frame that separates the glass on the front from the glass on the back. Now speaking of that glass around front, it is the original Gorilla Glass Victus, which I found is very good at not shattering into tiny razor sharp fragments when you face plant the bugger on a concrete floor, but unfortunately it does scratch up far too easily, so I have left the pre-installed screen protector here on the Find X5 Pro. Thankfully over time, it still looks really good, sometimes these screen protectors get all scuffed up and they look really crap, so you have to take them off, not the case on this one. And frankly, I'm too terrified to take it off in case I get any scratches on that screen because this phone is far too expensive for that shit. However, one aspect of this smartphone's design that I really don't like is the fact that it is so bloody slippery. I keep leaving it on the arm of my sofa and then thinking it'll still be there when I come back from making myself a cup of tea or fetching myself a glass of water or... Okay, hard liquor. It's always hard liquor. Anyway, moving on to the software experience, and this has been upgraded to Color OS 13 based on the latest Android 13 OS. And unlike One UI on that Galaxy S22 Ultra, which I also recently re reviewed, I found the experience has been pleasingly jank free here on the Oppo Find X5 Pro. This phone has been very well behaved. Most of those Color OS 13 changes get a thumbs up from me, including the more prominent media controls, the bolder fonts, and of course the harrowing always on display updates where you can watch a fluffy penguin's offspring gradually cop it as that temperature rises. It's definitely a stark and kind of depressing reminder of how basically we've completely f***ed everything and we're all doomed. The only problem is I'm kind of torn between, you know, sorting all my rubbish into recycling piles or just straight up topping myself. But anyway, if you want a proper full-on look at ColorOS 13, I actually did a whole video on that already, with even more sexy dead penguin baby action, so I'll definitely go have a squint at that one. And connectivity has been absolutely sterling the entire time I've been using this smartphone, thanks to Oppo's very clever, smart antenna design. This basically ensures you'll get a really strong mobile data or Wi-Fi connection no matter how you hold this shiny bugger. Again, I did a separate video testing this out where the Find X5 Pro was only finally scuppered by a steep descent into underground caves. However, one feature here on the Find X5 Pro that doesn't work quite as well as many flagship rivals is that in-display optical fingerprint sensor. I found that if my hands were even ever so slightly moist, this basically just falls on its arse and cannot recognise me to save its life. Thankfully, the face recognition is a lot more dependable, if not quite as secure. And the lack of micro SD memory card support is a bit of a bum as well, although pretty standard for flagship smartphones these days. Thankfully, you've got 256 gigs of onboard storage here. I still haven't managed to fill that up despite lots and lots of camera play and download and shares on the likes of Netflix and Deezer. Now, I've got nothing new to say about that 6.7 inch AMOLED display with its deliciously crisp WQHD Plus resolution. Like many smartphones these days that cost even just 400-ish quid or more, the Find X5 Pro serves up 10-bit colour and HDR support, so movies and shows look rather ruddy wonderful. Every frame is packed with detail and that 120Hz refresh rate means that visuals are creamy smooth. 
Movies also sound proper lush with the Dolby Atmos support and that stereo speaker setup which is powerful enough to keep the audio crisp and pretty clear in troublesomely loud places. And over the months, much like the mobile connectivity, I've had no bother whatsoever from the Bluetooth streaming. Back when I first reviewed the Finex 5 Pro, I did notice a crackling sound every time I hibernated the phone when it was streaming to a pair of Bluetooth headphones or whatever, but thankfully that bug seems to have been stamped out, no such issues anymore. So overall, this smartphone is a bit of a beast when it comes to media, if not quite as packed with nerdy features as the Sony Xperia 1. Now running the show here is Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with a respectable 12 gigs of RAM to keep things moving along smoothly. And over these past few months, I certainly haven't noticed any kind of slowdown or other performance related issues as you'd kind of hope from a smartphone that costs over a thousand bloody pounds. Of course, the 8 Gen 1 is known for occasionally getting a little bit hot under the collar, but Oppo has wisely smushed a proper cooling system into the Finex 5 Pro with all kinds of vapory chamber graphene layer goodness. And while that arsen does get pretty warm when you're gaming around the top end near the camera bump, I haven't noticed any kind of throttling of that performance, even if I spend an hour or two being generally s**t at Genshin Impact. That frame rate thankfully sticks close to 60 frames per second, and the gameplay is beautifully smooth. The only other times I've noticed any kind of heat buildup is when I've been using the cameras a lot, and not just shooting video with the camera, also when I've been Skyping for more than about 20 or 30 minutes, that top end can get a bit toasty. But again, it doesn't seem to bollocks up the performance or anything, everything still runs as you would expect. And if you are a gamer, that ColorOS gaming mode is still very handy if you want to tweak the screen sensitivity, block your boss from pestering you in the middle of an afternoon long Genshin session, whatever. Battery life! And the Oppo Finex 5 Pro has not wavered at all over the past few months despite the ColorOS 13 update and everything. I still get around 5-6 to six hours of full on playtime per charge from this thing and that's with mixed use but pretty intensive stuff overall. Lots of camera play, a good bit of gaming every now and then, lots of media streaming, listening to lots of very angry shouty music while the phone is hibernating as well. And when this rather attractive pocket pleaser is finally completely out of juice, well no worries, you can fill it back up again in a jiffy. You got that 80 watt SuperVOOC fast charging. Otherwise, if you've got a wireless charger kicking about the place, 50 watt AirVOOC charging support as well. But of course, one of the very best features of the Oppo Finex 5 Pro when it first launched was that camera setup. And of course, that was before the Pixel 7 phones and several other big rivals from the likes of Xiaomi came along. Now the main camera sensor here on the Finex 5 Pro is Sony's 50 megapixel IMX766, one of the most common and popular smartphone camera sensors of 2022. And I'm not just talking around flagship smartphones here either, lots of mid-rangers like the Nothing Phone and the Realme 9 Pro Plus use that exact sensor too. And it's actually the rest of the camera tech surrounding it that helps to elevate the Finex 5 Pro above most rivals, including the 5-axis optical image stabilization and Oppo's Marisilicon XNPU. All very posh and fancy pants and the result was very good low light photography, but is it still superior in 2023? Well, several months on, the Finex 5 Pro is still better than most of the competition when the light and aims great, including Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra and Sony's Xperia 1. But those Pixel 7 phones are just as capable in low light, and in fact in very low light, Google's blowers are absolutely on top. Still though, the Finex 5 Pro should please anyone who wields it after dark with its accurate colour capture and impressive noise reduction. You can expect bright, appealing pics with finer detail than most other camera phones can capture. Unless your subject moves, that is, in which case the photo will look sh**. In stronger light, the Finex 5 Pro is still a winner. Don't get too close to your subject as the focus will struggle, but HDR scenes are dealt with comfortably, and again those colours and textures are wonderfully lifelike. And occasionally when I first reviewed this smartphone, I found sometimes if there was some very strong light, then the picture would be a little bit bleached out, a little bit oversaturated, but thankfully that seems to be happening less and less these days. And yes, that is indeed a baby in a kind of spacesuit gas mask thing from the Second World War. It's not a real baby, obviously, they'd probably be a pensioner by now, so they would have burst free of their peculiar life-preserving prison long before now. Now occasionally I'll bust out the Oppo Finex 5 Pro's 50 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which is certainly one of the best on any smartphone that I've tested, especially in crappy lighting. However, while the 13 megapixel telephoto lens is quite handy for casual family shots where you don't want to intrude, it's nowhere near as powerful as the zoom skills of the Pixel 7 Pro, the Galaxy S22 Ultra and many other expensive blowers. I do still occasionally piddle about with the Hasselblad master style filters as well, my favourite is Radiance, which gives everything a hyper-real sci-fi vibe with blue skies, but unfortunately you don't get many of those here in the UK right now, boo hiss etc. 
But I've got to admit, when it comes to that Hasselblad X-Pan mode, I basically completely forgot it even existed for the majority of the time I've been using this phone. It's not really one for me. And if you were hoping that ColorOS 13 would bring with it a host of fantastic new camera features and modes and other tasty treats, well, you're shit out of luck. Now, video is one area where the Oppo Find X5 Pro actually beats the Pixel 7 series. For me, it's right up there with Samsung smartphones and the likes of the Xiaomi 12T Pro for shooting crisp, gorgeous 4K video with excellent stabilization and clear audio pickup. At nighttime, it's excellent, again, reducing the noise and grain that often makes low light video look like a sack of pants. And in better light, you can skip merrily between the different lenses, shoot into the light, whatever you feel like. The Find X5 Pro copes admirably. Last up, swap to the selfie cam and you can capture photos that once again look good, if not quite as lovely as those snapped around back. For instance, it is still easily thrown out by harsh backlighting, so you will have to get your angles right. Likewise, it's not as capable in low light, you will definitely need a steady hand, although the screen flash feature can light you up and it didn't make me look too spectral. And that right there, my lovelies, is my full, frank, final, in-depth, long-term review of the Oppo Find X5 Pro. And I've got to say, I still really enjoy using it as my full-time smartphone. Very few gripes indeed. But that said, unfortunately, it does still cost close to a grand. And with a glut of Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones incoming, you might want to hold on a wee bit longer before slapping down your cash. If you see a great deal on it, of course, definitely go for it. And that's what I think. What do you guys reckon? Have you been using the Oppo Find X5 Pro as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear your mini reviews down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Charles.